So today I'm going to be introducing the new TypeSafe API for ZIO DynamoDB, a new easy-to-use TypeSafe API that prevents many runtime errors at compile time. So a little bit about myself. I've used Scala in production for the last six years. I've been a back-end engineer at Disney Streaming for over three years now, doing serverless development at scale, using mainly DynamoDB and the Kinesis APIs. Early on, I introduced ZIO to two development teams on the program, so I've been lucky enough to use it in production during this time. And fun fact, as I've mentioned previously, I remember when relational databases were loaded using an 8-inch floppy disk, and that's what it looked like. So, talk outline. I'm going to do a quick recap on uh, using the AWS Java SDK, where we got up to in last year's presentation and what was missing, give you an introduction to the new TypeSafe API, and then I'm going to show you a couple of examples that use this API, and then finally a summary and a wrap-up. So using the uh, AWS Java SDK, we're going to take this simple Scala model here, that consists of a student case class and a payment sum type. Then we're going to create the table, save the model to this table, read it back again using batched reads and writes, taking into account optional fields and sum types. And along the way, we're going to have to integrate with the SDK and do Java interop. So to accomplish all this, what does the SDK example look like? Boom. So that's 240 lines of code. Deals with stuff like SDK builder classes, Java interop, including interop with Java collection types and completable futures, low-level error handling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So much boilerplate code that I'm not going to cover it here. If you want the full gory details, you can watch last year's talk or look at this SDK example in the microsite or in the repo. So as a summary of the SDK, it's a lot of tedious boilerplate code it's not type safe, and it's prone to runtime errors. So let's look at the ZIO DynamoDB solution. So this is where we got up to in last year's presentation. It's a huge reduction in boilerplate, and the library takes care of thorny issues such as Java and SDK interop. It has composable queries that automate batching and do auto parallelization for queries that can't be batched. So next, we're going to take a tour of how we got here and what was missing. So we're going to look at some of the fundamental types in the low-level API, and these map one-to-one -one with DynamoDB concepts. In DynamoDB, an attribute value represents a field type and value pair. Here we see the API captures this in a sealed trait hierarchy. A DynamoDB item is a record, a map of field name to attribute value that we just saw previously. In the low-level API, it's modeled as an attribute map, which is a wrapper for a map of string to an attribute value. We provide item and primary, primary key type aliases, along with a special apply method that cuts out construction boilerplate. The DynamoDB query type is polymorphic in type A, which represents a return type. And this is returned inside a ZIO by the execute method. AWS operations like getItem are modeled as some types that extend this trait. In DynamoDB, a projection expression is a way of accessing an attribute in an item. We see here email is a simple root-level attribute. Address.line1 is a map element which uses a dot syntax, and tutors1.surname is a list element which uses a race syntax. In the API, it's represented as a sealed trait. Manually creating projection expressions using the constructors is painful. As we can see, this leads to deeply nested code. So we introduced the dollar function, and this takes a string path expression and returns a projection expression. Inside the function, it calls constructors that we saw earlier. And all this is really convenient, but it's totally type unsafe. In DynamoDB, a condition expression is a way of specifying a condition that must hold for a put item, update item, or a delete item. And a very similar concept is a filter expression that applies to a DynamoDB query. In the low-level API, both condition and filter expression concepts are modeled by sealed trait condition expression. 
So here we have the full syntax of a condition expression. We have condition expressions that are made up of operands, comparators, functions. And as we can see, this is a reasonably complex syntax. Dealing with, the, dealing with this in, in the Java SDK involves a massive amount of boilerplate. Anything we can do to make expressions simple and safe to use would be a big win. Update expressions consist of actions which can be set, remove, add, and delete, and operands which can be a path or a function. Again, this is reasonably complex syntax that's a pain to use in the SDK. To give you a feel for the low-level API, I'm going to whiz through an example. First note that we're dealing with the loosely typed item. For example, we're using a string value for our payment sum type here, and lots of stuff can go wrong. Next, we do a put item, which is an upsert using our unsafe item. Now, zipping two put items will also, produce, will also batch the query. Here, get item will return an item which we know is not type safe. Update item takes a primary key and an update action. In this example, we are setting the payment sum type to a field. Sorry, we, we're setting the payment sum type field to a string value and adding one to the numeric age field. This is not type safe. We could easily mistype the field name and we can set any random string for the payment sum type. Delete item takes a primary key and a condition expression, which is also type unsafe. Finally, we have to manually deserialize from an attribute map to a Scala class. Manual serialization of items is a lot of tedious boilerplate and error prone. So we looked to see if we could improve things. So ZIO schema came to the rescue, which to quote the readme offers compositional type safe schema definitions which enable auto derivation of codecs and migrations. Next we see what it looks like in user code and also how we used it in the library. In this example, we save and get a student in a type safe manner. We create a normal Scala case class rather than an untyped item. We define an implicit schema using the derived schema gen macro in the companion object of student, of student. In our put query, we use a case class for the payload, and for the get query, you get returned a case class. In the library, we define codecs that take a schema of A as an implicit parameter. Inside these functions, we pattern match on the schema to produce the desired codec. And this is a huge increase in usability. As consumers of ZI schema, we were pioneers of using annotations to customize behavior of our automated codecs. So you can see here, we can switch our representation in the database between tagged unions and discriminated unions. Also, we can switch the way we actually store enums. And also, we can change the way names in case classes, case class fields, discriminator fields, and enum values are stored as well. However, note that annotation names that we use will be changing to align with standard annotation names uh, that have come in the new version of ZI schema. So here's a code example, but with a deliberate mistake that will fail at runtime. Can you spot it? The error is that we're comparing a numeric age field to a string value, and this is pretty hard to spot. We have no help from the compiler here. So this is a summary of where we left off in the last talk, and we can see that only get and put queries use automatic serialization. Also, all, all queries do not have type-safe expressions. This is still a huge improvement over the SDK. However, we can see that there's still a lot of work left to do. Before I can talk about the new TypeSafe API, we need to briefly touch on the topic of optics. Optics provide a way of navigating your immutable data structure that reduces boilerplate. There are three kinds of optics. There's a prism, which accesses product data, a lens, which accesses some type data, and traversal, which accesses a, accesses a collection. Drilling, into, drilling down into a field, e.g. student or email, is a Scala language feature that is not a value. Optics libraries takes these, take these language features and turn them into values that can be composed. 
Typically, libraries use functions in, in the encoding, and this is called executable encoding. However, there is a problem with this. Functions are opaque and can't be sent over the wire. And even if they could, they would probably not make any sense on the receiving domain. In order to get around this, CIO schema introduces a new feature called rayfied optics. If you look up the word rayfy, it means to make something abstract more concrete or real. CIO schema uses a declarative encoding to describe structures as values and provides an access a builder trait. We provide an implementation of this trait for what it means to navigate a projection expression for a prism, lens, and traversal, and feed it back to ZIO schema in the implementation of the accesses method shown here. Rayfied optics describes this declarative encoding based approach. With rayfied optics, we regain the ability to inspect information on the server domain. Rayfied optics are not enough on their own, however. We need to extend this type safety to the rest of the API. So we added phantom type parameters to our lower level representations. The contravariant from type parameter represents the whole item, and the covariant to type parameter represents the attribute or piece we are dealing with. This was cascaded all the way down to the rest of the API. The new type safe API uses rayfied optics to constrain expressions to the type we are working with. In the IDE, when we hover over the field, we can see the from type is a student, and the to type is a type of the field in the student case class. This is a huge breakthrough. We use projection expressions defined above to create our update actions, which are now constrained to the student type. Not only that, when we do parameter info, parameter help inside the IDE, we see that both actions are constrained to the field types in the case class. Similarly, condition expressions are now constrained to the student type, and comparison values are constrained to the case class type, case class field type, sorry. This even includes some types like the payment field here. Here we try to introduce a non-student condition expression and the compiler complains. When we change it to student.age, we use the wrong type value on the right-hand side. And again, this shows us a compiler error. So next, I'm going to show you some, uh, some examples using the new API. So as a way of motivating a realistic example, we're going to look at an optimistic locking implementation using the new TypeSafe API. First, some background information you need to know about DynamoDB, and that is it provides an atomic add operation that, when applied in combination with a condition expression on the same field, is guaranteed to happen atomically. We extend our student case class to include a version field of type long, and this field will be used for the optimistic locking. We use the built-in rayfied optics to get our fields as projection expressions. We create our optimistic update function, which this utility function, which takes a primary key, a callback function from a student to an action of type student that the user passes in. Here we get the student by primary key, which we use as the before image. Next, we do an update using the provided primary key. We then chain a couple of update expressions together. In the first one, we invoke the user callback function with the found student. In the second one, we add one to the version, which is the first part of the atomic add. Then we add a condition expression to check that the version is still the same as, the, as in the before image. And this is the second part, the, uh, the atomic add. If the version condition does not hold, a condition check violation exception is thrown by the SDK. Very often, a simple retry is enough to resolve this situation, so we add one here. Here, we invoke the above utility function, and we call it with some conditional business logic, which returns a different update expression depending on the state of the student. And the utility function will ensure read consistency in the database 
for us using the version field. All of this is done in just a few lines of type safe code, and the programmer can focus on the core business logic with auto completion available in the IDE at each stage. The same program written using the SDK would easily be over 100 lines of type unsafe code. In the next example, we're going to look at a migration pipeline. We want to scan the student table and filter where age is greater than 21 and the enrollment is after a certain cutoff date. And we want to parallelize this in DynamoDB into end segments to reduce the elapsed, the elapsed time of the scan. For each student, we want to look up the course data in the student courses table. So this is just like a simple lookup table. Finally, we want to write the merged information into the new student two table all reads and writes need to be batched, and we want to do all this in a type-safe manner. So this sounds like a lot of work, right? So this is, the this is how it looks like in the using the new type-safe API. So we can see it can be done in just a few lines of code. Scan all. The scan all query handles the parallel processing and filtering and returns a z-stream of students. And batch read from stream takes a student stream as input and uses it as a lookup for the student courses using batched reads and returns the Z stream of tuple two, which is a student and student courses. And batch write from stream takes the stream of tuples as an input and does a batch write of the merged data to the student two database. So we can see that the new TypeSafe API allows us to focus on the application logic in a type-safe way in just a few lines of code. And thanks to Z-Streams, we can do this efficiently in a finite amount of memory. So in summary, we have seen that where we left off last time was a huge improvement in boilerplate reduction and developer UX. However, the majority of the high-level API was still not type-safe. So let's see, let's see where we are with the new type-safe API. Going back to our condition and fit, filter expression syntax diagram, we now have full type safety coverage. Similarly, going back to the update expression syntax diagram, we now have full type safety coverage. So here we see the same summary table for all the main query types we saw earlier, but this time for the new type safe API. And we see we have automatic serialization and type safe expressions for all the queries listed. So please check out the GitHub repo. We now even have a microsite. Integration tests run against DynamoDB Local, which is a fantastic piece of software. So you can run them on your local machine. And with a switch of config, you can run them against real AWS as well, just by switching layers. You can also check out last year's functional Scala talk, where we introduced the library for the first time. I'd like to say a big thank you to all the sponsors, Zyverge, Scholar-C, Umatter, Colorogix, Conductor, and Matex for giving me this opportunity to talk about this library again, and to Sandra Anagata for organizing the conference, John for his mentorship during development, and special, special mention goes out to Adam Johnson for his work on the API interpreter that, in, that interfaces with ZIO AWS. And lately, he's contributed multi-table transaction support and documentation, so please check it out. Uh, oh, and, and I mentioned that uh, the library hasn't been merged to master yet. It's still in a feature branch, but it'll be merged. It'll be, uh, there'll be a PR coming soon. So that's it from me.